What's up everybody? So today's gonna be a really busy day. In fact, I'm running behind right now. I just got to the bank. First part of the day, we are going to an auction. It's a little tricky. These auctions usually need a cashier's check at the auction. Well, these lawyers are having the auction at 9 a.m. And as you know, the bank doesn't open until nine. So we're going to do a little trick here. My partner's gonna to go to the auction and bid while I'm at the bank getting the check and hopefully we're fast enough to make the transition because we don't want to look stupid, bid on the house and then not have the check. Usually they work with this, but sometimes they can be real sticklers and won't let us do that. So we're going to be as quick as possible. I'm at the bank right now and then I'll take you guys with me to the auction and hopefully we win this one because this is a really good deal. How are you doing today? Hanging in there. How about you? Pretty good. All right. So here's the names we need it to. It's a, uh, it's a lot. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. You have a great day. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Yeah, man. All right, guys, so we pulled it off. We got the check in time and we won the house. We're here at the courthouse now. Sorry about the camera quality. I had to switch to my cell phone as they don't love big cameras in the courthouse, of course. Uh, I'm going to take you guys to the house right now. Actually, we're going to go take a look at it. And then after that, we're going to go look at that multi unit that we got a couple weeks ago because we could finally get in there and inspect it. All right, let's go. All right, so this is it. This is the house we just won at the auction. Andrew came over here and looked at it yesterday. We all agreed that it would be a good buy. It's in a really nice neighborhood. It's right next to the college. University of Charleston is like two blocks from here. So it's a great location for a rental, great location for a flip, any of that. We failed at getting inside of it. You'll probably see a clip of that. We're going to call our maintenance guy to come over here, take the locks off of it, switch them out. Then we can get in here and inspect it. No workers comp. <laughs> Oh, man. All right, since we can't get inside of it, I just want to talk real quick about what we can see from the outside. The siding seems to be in really good condition. It has a metal roof, which is always good. Those last forever. We rarely need to change those out. Sometimes we may need to paint them if they look dated. The foundation may need painted. It looks like it's a little bit faded down here. This porch needs shirt up, but the house itself seems to be in really good condition. Again, we can't get inside of it yet. It actually has a really nice backyard back here. It's completely fenced in and goes pretty far back, which is always a plus if you're trying to sell this thing. People with pets, kids, whatever, they love this. Um, yeah, we just need to get in here and landscape this and make it look a lot better. Uh, but once we get inside of here, I'll either show it to you guys on this vlog or on Instagram. And yeah, we bought this for $55,000 at the auction. And the comps are showing we can get about one forty dollars for it, which means if we can get away with repairs over here for less than $30,000, we will be doing really well. Okay, so we're over here at Russell now. For those of you who haven't been following me or this is your first vlog, this is an auction property we bought about three weeks ago. It is a fourplex multi-unit. Uh, we knew it needed some repairs when we bought it. That's not a big deal. This is an investment property after all, but today is the first day we were able to walk through some of the units. One of the units actually has a tenant in it from the previous landlord. And unfortunately, he was what we would call a slumlord and he didn't take care of the unit at all. And in fact, I can't make this up. When we came over here today to knock on her unit, when I knocked on the door, I'll show a clip of it. The door completely fell into the kitchen just by me knocking on it. And that is very unfortunate and actually very sad. And we're going to fix that for her right away. The problem is while we would love for her to stay, the unit needs repairs and we don't think she can stay in there. It's actually probably against the law for us to let her live in there because of the situation and the way it looks. So we need to get that fixed ASAP or move her out, whatever the case may be. One of our contractors is in there right now, switching out all the locks, all the doors, ensuring up the place. And we have another guy coming over later this evening or first thing in the morning to put a new door on her unit to secure it up. But yeah, I'm gonna walk you guys through the units that we can walk through. I'm just gonna do a quick walkthrough video. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna assess this property, see what repairs it needs, get some pictures, and then send this out to some investors to see if they wanna buy it as is. But again, we are gonna sure up her unit and give her some security. And if you're ever a landlord or know anybody that is a landlord and operates that way, correct it. Don't let them keep doing that. That's not right. People deserve decent housing and that is not what she's getting here. If they're paying you rent, you need to make sure that their house is secure at the very least. Sorry, I just had to go on that rant real quick because it upsets me a little bit. But yeah, anyway, I'm gonna walk you through it real quick. I wanted to add real quick that this is kind of unknown territory for us. We don't buy a lot of rentals like this or at least with tenants in them already and in such disrepair. But we are doing everything we can, getting in touch with the housing authority and the law if we have to, to see how we can fix the situation for her. 
as we don't want to do anything illegal here. We don't want to have her trying to sue us and say that we gave her the unit like this. That's not the case. The previous landlord is at fault here and we just kind of inherited it. So anyway, if you guys know what we're supposed to do here, please comment below. By then we have probably figured it out. But yeah, anyway, guys, I just want to be honest with you guys. And sometimes we see new stuff every day and I want to show you guys that stuff. As you can see, that building's going to need some repairs, right? We've guessed about eight to ten thousand dollars per unit, depending on what you want to do in there. It's still a great investment for somebody. If you bought it for fifty and put fifty in it, and it's a hundred thousand dollars that you have into it, and you rent each unit for around five hundred dollars each, that's two thousand dollars in income on a hundred thousand dollar note. It's really good if you do the math over a 15 or 25 year mortgage. We do think an investor will buy it for around there. Uh, we don't see why not, especially after the repairs are done. I just don't think we're gonna do the repairs. We'd like to sell it to someone to do the repairs themselves as this is not our typical type of flip. But right now I'm gonna take you guys over to another investment property or a potential investment property on Greendale where we have flipped another home previously. And yeah, it could be a potential and we're gonna see if we can put an offer in. All right, so now we're over at Greendale. This is a property we're looking to possibly buy. I actually found this one while we were working on this house right here that Rihanna and I invested on a while back and the company flipped. I mean, that one turned out great. So now we're over here looking at this one as another possible investment. It's a smaller house. It's only about 800 square feet. The doctor that owned it previously had multiple units. He wants out of the business and he's looking to get rid of this hopefully for cheap. We're going to walk through it right now and make him an offer. Price square foot we sell Greendale for it, remember? Well, we, I thought we, we bought it for, I mean, we sold it for 105, right? Yeah. How many square foot was Greendale? 1400, I think. Um, so, uh, why don't we just, man, this would be a good rental. You know what I mean? At 10 grand, you can throw somebody in here. So we just got done walking through here. Unfortunately, this one's gonna be a little bit tough being that it's a one bedroom. It's really hard, if not impossible, to sell a one bedroom house. And the way that we've chopped it up, it's gonna be really hard to put a bedroom back in here to make it two bedrooms. Uh, but yeah, we came up with a number. We're gonna offer probably somewhere around $10,000 on this house. That's all we can really do on this house. Unfortunately, if he takes it, we'll buy it. If not, we just move on to the next one, no big deal. And uh, yeah, that's it for this house. And just like that, we're back at the office. I really need to work on my transition game. Was that better? Did that work? All right, we're back at the office now. We're coming back because we need to work on some profit and loss statements. My partner's not happy with the way they look. Anyway, we're going to work on those for a little while and then go over a game plan for all the houses that we just won at the auction. The other one we bought, the one we need to put the offer in on, Russell. We're going to go through all those houses right now. And uh, yeah, I'll catch up with you guys in just a second. All right, well, that wraps up my day here at the office. I'm going to rush home real quick. I have to get ready for the gym and I'm gonna wrap the vlog up there. All right, everybody, I'm home now and I'm actually drinking my pre-workout. I'm getting ready to go to the gym. Uh, if you think I talk fast now, you should hear me after this. So I better go ahead and get this out of the way. So just like the last vlog, I announced on my Instagram that I'd be answering your questions throughout this vlog and had you guys send me some questions on Instagram and I picked a few of those. So I wanna go ahead and answer those before I wrap this vlog up. All right, so the first question I got was from Na Nav. What do you think about tax lien auctions? P.S. I'm in North Carolina. So I actually like tax lien auctions. I think they're a great idea and a great way to diversify your portfolio. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar, tax lien auctions are basically just that, where you buy the tax lien against the property 
And the person in order to redeem that or get that lien off their house has to pay you off plus interest. So it's a great way to earn some interest because I think it's like 12% on average, which is a fantastic return. You just really need to be educated and know what you're buying. Otherwise you could end up with that property and then you would have to pay the taxes on it and it might not be worth that much money or worth paying the taxes on. So you do need to be careful. So quick answer for that is yes, I think they're a great idea as long as you're educated on the way it works in your state and your county. All right, so the second question is, ever consider building efficiency fourplexes, et cetera, why or why not? I think what he's asking here, and this is Fito Sando. Sorry if I slaughtered that. Uh, wants to know if we're building like uh, multifamilies. And no, right now we are not building multifamilies, but actually we do have a proposal out to one of our investors to build a bunch. One second, that's the stove timer. I have no idea why that's going off. All right, so like I was saying, we do have a proposal out to one of our investors for a piece of land that we own to build, I think five or six townhomes on that lot. So that would be one of our biggest builds. Before I got here, my partners Andrew and Steve did build two brand new townhomes side by side. But again, this would be for like four to six of them. And we are excited to get started on that project if the investor wants to go through with it. But outside of that, no, we are not building any multifamily right now. That fourplex that you've seen earlier in this vlog is our first multifamily flip wholesale type of deal. And I'm not sure what we're gonna do with it yet, but I'll keep you guys updated. The next question is from Marcolette. Sorry, I'm off with these Instagram names. What side hustle do you think has the best return for time investment? I think what he's asking or what she's asking, I can't tell by the picture here, is what is the best ROI for a side hustle? And this one might sound boring to you, but it is going to be self-education. It's going to be learning as much as you can, as often as you can. Reading as many books, going to as many meetings, free seminars, YouTube videos, getting on the bigger pockets forums, wherever you gotta do, go to get this education. Self-education is always gonna give the highest return on investment because really all you are investing is your time and you really can't lose money that way outside of maybe opportunity costs. But again, that's what I would recommend. Self-education is gonna be your best side hustle. The next question is, do you invest in crypto by Capo Cuba? Uh, yes, I actually did invest in cryptocurrency. If you're one of my original followers on Instagram, you will know that I told everybody it was a very speculative trade and that you should not be doing it unless you had discretionary income. In fact, I think it was Mark Cuban or someone like that said that you should have less than 1% of your total net worth in crypto. And so that's what my wife and I did. I think we put around $5,000 into crypto and we're down about 80% on our investment. We did not invest in it for the short term. We said, hey, this does look like the future of money. It might not be now, it might not be in 10 years, but maybe in 20 years. And so we went ahead and threw some money in there. It went up at first, we were way up. I think we were up like 40% out the gate. But then after that, it came crashing down in the last year, year and a half or so has been very bearish in the crypto market. And nobody really knows what's happening with that. If they tell you otherwise, they're lying. Uh, be very careful with investing in cryptocurrency. The next question I have is from Erica Lamb. What age do you and Rihanna want to retire and with how much? How are you gonna make it a reality? That's a great question, Erica. Uh, I would say when is as soon as possible, but also never. And what I mean by that, we want the ability to retire but I don't think we ever will retire. We both like to work too much. We like to stay active. We will just do more of the things that we want to do. Um, we are kind of in that position now, and I don't say that in any way, to shape or form to brag, uh, but we just want more for ourselves. We want more freedom, more vacations, more traveling. We want to own more property. Uh, we want to do more good. We want to open animal shelters one day. So to have all that, we need more money. And so that's why we continue to work, but we are technically financially free right now and could probably do early retirement if we really wanted to and wanted to live off the income we can make now. How are we gonna make that a reality? Uh, by doing exactly what we're doing now, making tons of sacrifices and just working our butts off. Uh, we still do what we love. We still find time for each other and for things that we're passionate about and for traveling. But in the meantime, we are just constantly working and constantly working towards these big goals we have. All right, last question is, and they wanted to stay anonymous. What's your take on co-signing a house loan for a parent before starting college? Um, this is my views and opinions, so please hope nobody gets offended, but I absolutely would not co-sign for anybody, especially when you're young and making big financial moves like going to college, or before you make big financial moves like going to college. 
Uh, it's just too risky. Uh, look, I understand that it's family and ultimately it's your decision. You're going to have to decide if that's the right answer for you or not. But if I was advising somebody, parent, kid, brother, sister, cousin, friend, whatever the case may be, I am highly against co-signing because you have no control over that person's finances or what they do or the mistakes they make. Um, I know it can be tricky when it's family, you want to help people out, but uh, what I always say is you have to fill your own cup first, and then when that runs over, help everybody else out. Uh, you may look at that differently, but that's my views and opinions on that. All right, so that wraps up the Instagram questions. Thank you guys for asking those questions. I love answering those for you. I want to do more of those in the future, and eventually I'll have rewards for those questions as well. If you've been following me on Instagram, I've been giving out rewards already. Uh, so follow me over there, at John Schuller, if you want a chance to participate in that. And that's going to wrap up the vlog. Uh, I know it was a little bit hectic and all over the place, but that's frankly, that's real life for me. I'm all over the place. I never know where I'm going to be one hour to the next. Auctions pop up, house problems pop up. I need to get back to the office. You know, a contractor calls, whatever the case may be. And I really couldn't do this or do this at this scale without my partners. I don't want to say I couldn't do it because I think all three of us could do this on our own if we really wanted to, but we just don't want to. We love working with each other and have a lot of fun. I hope you guys see that on these vlogs. And uh, yeah, thanks again for watching. Make sure you subscribe so I can show more people how to do this and help more people with their finances as that is my passion. And thank you as always for watching and supporting my channel. Please smash the thumbs up button if you like this and I'll see you guys on the next vlog.